ambassador of Latin countries in the East, cherished by adopted members of the Slavs, and influenced by three distinct empires in the past. Romania is one of the most specific countries in the world. It's known to everyone mostly due to a faint mixture of legend and reality. Yet Romania is both overlooked and underestimated as a destination to explore. However, our video will make you visit there as fast as gigabytes flow through the country or gigabats fly over it. Oh, they didn't have a ton of bats, but really good internet. Really, really good internet. Romania, as it's called Romania? by citizens, wow. is the 12th largest country in Europe with 238,391 kilometers squared, putting it between UK and Belarus on the list. And if we look globally, it is 81st, sandwiched by Ghana and Laos. Yet, where it matters more on the map, Romania is neighbored by Bulgaria to the south, then Serbia, Hungary, Ukraine and their younger sibling Moldova. All these borders came to a total of 3,195 kilometers, with the longest one being with Moldova at 681 kilometers. Wow. Romania also has a coastline of 245 kilometers with important Black Sea to the east. When it comes to the population, Romania is ninth in Europe with 19,237,000 I don't know how correct that is. That feels like it's very off, but yeah. Measured with all countries of the world, Romanians count to the 62nd spot to find their numbers below Kazakhstan and above Malawi. Down south is the capital of Romania, which is called Bucharest. This is by far the most populous with a bit of over two million people. Then we have a few major cities that all have about the same population of just over 300,000 people. There's Timizora in the west, the central position Cluj Napoca, and Yash in the northeast. And then, pretty good. of course, Constanta, which sits right <laughs> next to the Black Sea. Constanza. Romania absolutely dominates the surroundings in terms of population, as it has around two times or way more citizens than all of the countries put nearby south and west, plus Moldova. And a similar ratio applies to the territory. The only neighbor slapping them on the fingers here is Ukraine, which does to Romania what they do to their neighbors, dwarfing them in terms of population and landmass. And just wow. earlier I mentioned Poland being the opposite of Romania, and what I mean by that is that Poland is a Slavic Catholic country, while Romania is a Latin yet Orthodox country. <laughs> That's right. Despite what most people think, most likely people who don't subscribe to countries explain, Romania is usually classified as a Slavic country by default, while it's not. So if you don't want to make a fool I would of consider it a future, Baltic state, that subscribe button below. So or a Balkan state, not Baltic. The Romanian language also falls into the category of Romance languages, yeah. alongside Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, and French. There's also the Romanian language. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't think these languages descend from the same family, now would you? But I guess if we took a closer look at I the know name that. of the country, we can see that the clue was kind of in front of us all along. Although being the island that it is in the Slavic Sea of countries did have its effects. And for instance, the Romanian word for yes is the same one that the Russians, Serbs, Bulgarians and others use, which is da. Uh. But it's even harder to define Romania in much more tangible matters than language, like geographical placement, as it finds itself at the end of Central Europe, the edge of the Balkan Peninsula, and not quite in the far east of Europe. Yeah. From these three directions came the empires that marked the Romanian culture and influenced the crafting of such a unique blend. The Austro-Hungarians, the Ottomans... I think this is like one of the coolest parts of Romania, right? Like. You're not quite Far Eastern Europe, you're not quite Central Europe, you're not quite Balkan. I would say they're more Balkan than the other two, but like it's just this incredible blending of all three cultures coming into play. And in each city you can see like how each one is affected by like each of those cultures. So I think this is one of the coolest things about Romania right there. And the Russians. And even now... The country's status is a bit hard to detail, as it finds itself in the European Union, but not in the Schengen zone of passport-free movement. It is now. The euro, which we know, is the official currency of the country, even though it joined the organization in 2007. The Romanian Lao still changes its Leo, which means lion. this currency for the euro, we get about 0.2 euros for one loo. Yeah. One loo, on the other hand, consists of 100 baht. It's pretty really hard for the Romanians to tear away from their lions, which is the meaning of loo, although the banknotes being made of plastic might have something to do with it. Soon in within its spacious borders, Romania is easier to describe. Dominated by the Carpathian mountain range, 
the third longest in Europe with a stretch of 1500 kilometers, which kind of splits the land in half. In this huge mountain range, we also find the highest point in the country, the Moldovani Peak, sitting 2,540 Moldoviano Peak? I wonder what city that's nearby. Mountains put the finishing dot on this mountain chain. A temperate continental climate rules the land, with summer temperatures peaking at around 30 degrees Celsius. The country also has a nice mix of landscapes with the already mentioned mountains, but also fertile yeah. green fields in the it's south, beautiful. and of hills, grassland, and swamps in the east. But arguably the second most defining geographical feature of Romania, after the Carpathian Mountains, is Europe's second longest river, the Danube. Yeah, About the Danube is awesome. 1,075 kilometers of this mighty river flows either through or adjacent to Romanian territory. And Romania's landscape has a huge part in contributing to this river, as 98% of Romania's rivers spring from the Carpathian Mountains. Yeah. And all of them, directly or indirectly, end up being tributes to the Danube. But something maybe even more remarkable than the river itself or at least very impressive is the gondola-like statue the Romanians have carved onto the stone of the riverbank to honor the last king of Dacia. No, not the Dacia, but Decibel, the last king of Dacia who fought the Roman emperors to preserve the independence of his country. And it is safe to say that this river has had great meaning to Romania over the years, serving as a natural border almost yeah. entirely towards Bulgaria, considerably with Serbia, and the tiny tiniest bit with Moldova, and then with Ukraine. Romania has gained more from the Danube than even John Strauss. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, Strauss wrote one of his most famous waltzes inspired by the Danube in his piece, The Blue Danube. But even these days, the Danube plays a vital role for Romania, especially due to the Constanta port, the largest one on the Black Sea. Yeah, Constanta's huge, and it has like military bases and stuff there too. 74% of Romania's exports go up the stream to the EU countries. And speaking about exports, Romania's economy is helped a lot by being the fourth largest producer of oil in the European oh. Union and the largest natural gas producer. I know, like, the, the Ploiesht area was bombed because of oil. Dacia, which is the country's biggest company in terms of revenue and accounted for 8% of the country's total exports. It's now owned by Renault and the company's only factory is located in the small town of Mioveni, in the Argus County, which is one of 41 administrative units in Romania. Yet, historically, the country is divided into three main territories. First, there is Wallachia in the Fertile South. Then in the Northwest we have Transylvania. And I know you've been waiting for this, haven't you? Well, keep waiting. I'm covering the myths in just a bit. And then finally we have Moldavia in the Northeast. And no, we didn't forcefully unite the two siblings. You see, the country is called Moldova in English and the region Moldavia. These parts were quite populated in, in Romanian they call both. Moldova, the one the Republic of Moldova and one the area of Moldova. ...resisted the Romans in the 1st century AD. Yet the empire couldn't be denied, and in the 2nd century founded the province of Roma Dacia across Transylvania. This combination of Roman and Dacian cultures marked the beginning of the Romanian's ethnogenesis. After all, the country's name after the local name for Roman or Rome, hence the Latin connection. Even though the majority of today's country wasn't on Roman rule for long, the area became the staging route for tribes of Goths, Jepids, Avars, Slavs, and Huns coming to loot, pillage, rule, and migrate. Since the late 9th century, Magyars, which is the Hungarians, entered the phrase and stayed in it well until today. Saxon and settlers are settled by the king of Hungary in the 12th century, with the latter still relevant, alive, and kicking, even though you most likely haven't heard of them. In the 13th century, the mentioned territories of Wallachia, Moldavia, and Transylvania are established, with the latter being subjugated under Magyar rule, briefly uniting freely under Michael the Brave at the start of the 7th century. Yeah. Yet his fame is in the dark shadows of a far more globally known figure, Vlad III of Wallachia. Vlad, Vlad the Impaler. A ruler so ruthless, he served as an inspiration for the mythical figure of Dracul. With his father's title, Dracul, meaning dragon, played a role. And even though he was from Wallachia, Transylvania is eternally connected to the vampire lore. But Romania too as a whole has this mythical aura over it. Although Romania shouldn't really fret at all. Sure, there are these stories, if it is stories. I have been to like, um, uh, Castello Corvini lore, and it is a little spooky. Like, just thinking about some of the stuff that Vlad did and kind of 
the eerie feeling you get just even being there. It is kind of crazy. You just mentioned it is like kind of a creepier country, but it really only at that like castle is when I've been like, ooh, this is kind of weird. Did you tell me? But they also do have a much nicer Poland Bear! Oh, that's the like best! The famous place is known for these brightly colored tombstones. And also because they do. This is beautiful. I want to go here really badly. So, Romania is not the place to live if you're a witch, apparently. Moving back to completely real history, the Ottoman, Habsburg, and Russian empires started fighting and ruling over parts of Romania through the Middle Ages. Yeah. All until Alexandru Luan Cusa is proclaimed prince of both Moldavia and Wallachia, which unite as Romania in 1862, rejoined by the more famed Transylvania after World War I, and fought on the sides of the Allies. In World War II, Romania first joined the Axis side, then changed sides as the Soviets were winning in 1944. Nicolao Ceausescu will become the leader and the infamous dictator of the new socialist country. He spelled that name wrong. It is C E A U S E S C U for the famous dictator. Of the Warsaw Pact, leaving behind a rare impressive legacy of the placement of the parliament, the heaviest building in the world, before its demise in 1989 and the revolution. Another, perhaps more positive thing if you're into sports, came in the socialist years when the football club Stawa become the first Eastern European club ever to win the Champions Cup title. Continuing on the sports side of things, the country has had a big legacy in gymnastics with Nadia Comaneci as the big front figure. She won a total of nine Olympic medals, more than any other Romanian female. Today, however, the tennis player Simona Halep is perhaps the country's biggest sports star with a couple of Grand Slam titles on her belt. In entertainment, it's the Marvel star Bucky Barnes or the Winter Soldier played by Sebastian Stan who might be the biggest star the country has right now. Yeah. Well, him and of course the electronic music hitmaker Ina. It is safe to say that Romania is very interesting and that a video of a couple of minutes or a weekly tour would not do it justice. Luckily, moving to this unique place might be a great option because underneath the castles run the third fastest internet network in Europe and it has been for the longest time it's the fast. speed on the old continent. But a fast internet Interesting history and fascinating myths isn't enough. Here's another reason for setting down permanently in Romania. They actually lead the home ownership mixture of legend and okay. reality. Okay. And that's it. I think he did a great job of explaining the country and the history. I don't think he highlighted how beautiful Romania is and in the history how it's been fought over enough because of the beauty and the resources that are in Romania. So, oh, he did mention, like, the Ottomans, the Huns, the Turks, uh, the Magyars. There are plenty of people that have fought over Romania, and there's a good reason why. It is a super beautiful country filled with plenty of resources, and that's why I think it's on the up and up right now. Uh, there is another video I've talked about why I think Romania is going to be a superpower. If you want it, click here, and we'll check you next time on Bonarescu TV.